Welcome back to Mapping the Stimulus. Uh, let's now invite the Finance Minister of the State of Jammu and Kashmir, Mr. Haseeb Jabu. Haseeb is also an economist. Uh, Haseeb, uh, well, first up, in this budget, uh, uh, should the Finance Minister stay pat on indirect taxes altogether, since it is now uh, the preserve of the GST Council? Well, I would imagine so. I think, uh, 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 now that we are pretty certain that uh, you'll, you'll move on to the GST regime from 1st of July, mm. I think this period, intervening period, should be used to kind of focus on the systems and all. And ideally, ideally, I would imagine uh, one should do a vote on account for this uh, six months and uh, then move on to the uh, present the budget sometime, you know, in May uh, with the full details on the taxation regime. Because uh, otherwise it will become, you know, this budget itself you can't do very much on the indirect tax regimes. And then you're moving to a fairly uh, different system, mm. which will have its own uh, issues, operational, fitment, mm. macroeconomic implications. Mm. Uh, ideally, I think one choice that we seriously export is a vote on account and then a full-fledged budget. That's a creative idea. Nobody has given that. But... Uh, is it not possible that uh, the um, uh, finance minister can stay pat on indirect taxes, probably even tweak the service taxes closer to the uh, uh, known GST rates, and really do something dramatic on direct taxes, like phasing out exemptions and uh, bringing down rates? No? Uh, yes. What you could do is uh, make a transition from between now and, uh, and July move into those rate bands. Mm. Uh, but, you know, then I don't know if uh, that's how other states would also uh, want to do it because I just presented my budget mm. uh, about a week, 10 days back, and initially I thought that I would also move to a four or five band regime mm. in preparation for uh, the application of GST. Mm. But doesn't quite work because then, you know, in this period, you will be out of line with what has been agreed upon mm. in terms of the earlier regime. So, so it becomes a little more difficult. Uh, but that would be one option is to funnel the current rates into, broadly speaking, mm. the four or five rates of 0%, 5%, 12%, 18%, 28%. Mm. Uh, you could do that. But, you know, honestly, with that kind of numbers and that kind of commodities, uh, only for a period of six months, not worth the effort. Okay. And you will kind of uh, disturb the system much more than you would benefit from it. Okay. Uh, so uh, on balance, my own, uh, my own thing would be really uh, to go for the water account. Second preference is that leave the uh, taxes as it is, perhaps focus more, as you're saying, on, indirect tax, uh, on the direct tax regime. Uh, but again, uh, when I look at the overall macroeconomic situation, I would much rather f uh, make this a... Uh, a budget, a public expenditure budget, rather than a, you know, budget in terms of taxations and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, so that one can then control the overall economic growth in the system, at least give it some degree of uh, fiscal stimulus mm. on the expenditure side. So I would much rather focus on the expenditure part, because going forward, if you see that, mm. you will have to at some point reinvent the entire ritual of the union budget, as also state budgets. Because post July, mm. there is very little that you would be wanting, we would be doing on the indirect taxes. It's all to be done by the GST Council yep. with or without their approval. Mm. So you might as well start preparations of making budget a far more a public expenditure policy no, document no, 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 than, than a that. taxation. That precisely is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and now if you wear your economist hat as well, uh, if you do think the uh, economy needs a stimulus, are you convinced of that in the first place? And secondly, how can you make it a public expenditure budget? You mean uh, uh, he can raise uh, taxes or uh, increase the tax base in, in, in any which way, direct tax base, so as to be able to uh, increase the amount of money available for expenditure? Well, that is the funding part of it. Mm. I would first primarily focus on the level and the structure of expenditure. Yes, please. If you notice over the, three, four, over the last three, four years, mm. It's really become, uh, you know, kind of uh, the budget has a public expenditure policy in terms of, uh, like, you know, spending on schemes, uh, those major schemes like Manrega and others, mm. where you are really pushing up uh, consumer demand mm. uh, in, a, in a big way. So the focus of expenditure has been that. I would this time around think that more than that kind of consumption demand, what needs to be spurred is the industrial demand. 
and you may want to go back mm. to a expenditure strategy of if you want to call it the 50s perhaps you know mm. where public investment is a lot more than public expenditure mm. so though public investment is a subset of public expenditure mm. so what i'm saying is move away from the regular public expenditure which is your current expenditures to more a capex based uh, budget this year mm. and perhaps now start looking at public investment in agriculture and so on and so forth so in terms of the structure of uh, mm. uh, expenditure okay. and then for financing it perhaps you could live with a higher degree of deficit as well i wouldn't be averse to the idea of a pure play classical kind of fiscal stimulus where you have a slightly higher uh, fiscal deficit and also perhaps look at mm. non tax revenues as a source of uh, funding mm. than tax sources the thing today is to go back to a very classical budget uh, which we used to have earlier mm. where the public investment and expenditure mm. would drive the economy because okay. post 90s mm. it really has not been public investment it's been okay. private investments okay. and budget had lost its kind of place mm. uh, in the macro economic uh, context of india yeah. because the levels were not so high mm. maybe for a year or so we do need to go back to a to an old mm. style good old budget of uh, heavy expenditures okay well there uh, uh, two quick final questions sir, since we'll be out of time one uh, a, a higher deficit would also mean that uh, there will be a higher cost of money and uh, therefore private in, uh, investment which is already weak could get, could be scared away wouldn't that worry you well i would still think that as i said this should be now seen as a, a deliberately uh, expansionary uh, you know kind of fiscal and monetary policy regime right now okay. and uh, interest rates at some time the transmission mechanisms are not so so strong mm. that you would see an increase in cost of money in any case mm. the demand for money is very very uh, low as per of time mm. and uh, i would also want some degree of monetary tweaking to supplement the fiscal uh, expansion mm. so you would really uh, want a joint action of fiscal and monetary policy expansion okay. over the next 6 8 months to ride the the dampening that has happened and the uncertainty that could peg the rate at a lower uh, growth at a lower rate okay and uh, secondly you know there is a, a, a doubt among several people whether government is really capable of uh, does it really have the bandwidth administrative bureaucratic bandwidth for the kind of investment you're talking about witness for the current year they have uh, uh, 15000 road kilometers at the, as as the nhai's aim this far they have bid out just 5000 kilometers bandwidth lacking isn't it i know i yes i think that's the biggest constraint and i see it honestly now that one is also involved in mm. direct policy making the the institutional capability to spend mm. is rather low mm. um, in our case in, in my case in jnk i find it's very very low mm. it's not about you know we want to spend the money but the capability to spend is very low and i think at some point uh, it is also reflecting nationally mm. that the institutional capacity to to spend money uh, in in these kind of infrastructure areas is uh, is becoming a constraint and we need to focus on that as as one of the things but i think this budget should see some of that uh, happening and this budget should also see some degree of nudging of the banks which should mm. be corresponded by a monetary policy that actually gets banks to become more active uh, now again mm. because i am sensing that there is some kind of uh, reluctance and also the emergence of a certain degree of thing in the banks about uh, the quality of assets okay all right uh, hasib bravo we leave it at that but that is a radical expansionary uh, policy that uh, uh, the jnk finance minister is suggesting as well investment oriented and not the transfer of resources of the enrega variety or the universal basic income scheme that amitabh kant has been speaking about uh, uh, a very uh, uh, clear uh, uh, suggestion that it should be an investment led budget uh, or investment led public expenditure that uh, the finance minister should indulge in thank you very much for joining me in this edition of mapping the stimulus